We welcome you to Miles Chapel Baptist Church, located at 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina, where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain, preaching a powerful message that will definitely bless your heart and soul. The church vision is impacting, transforming, and empowering people's lives for victorious living. Yes, this church is designed for you and mine, where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain, preaching a powerful message every Sunday morning. Yes, the church location is 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina. The telephone number for prayer, information, or directions is 578-1450. Make sure you come out to this awesome church where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain of Miles Chapel Baptist Church, located again at 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina. Now get ready for a heavy word of God from Pastor Scotty Terrain. Get ready for the word. Ah! thankful. Um, some of us had been counted out and left for dead, but God's been good to us. Um, we, uh, we, it's word time. Ain't no, ain't no song today. Uh, Luke, Luke 10, Luke 10, Luke 10. So in an effort to uh, begin preparing um, our minds and our hearts for the outreach event on the 13th, uh, we've talked about staying connected, right? Uh, we talked about how uh, we have to stay connected because uh, if we are not connected, then we lose, we don't get the nutrients that we need. Um, and so we have to stay connected to the vine, right? Uh, and that we said that God was the vine dresser or King James version, the husband man. Uh, and Christ is the what? Huh? Okay, the vine. And we are? All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, and so then we, the next Sunday we talked about um, staying connected in the body, right? Everybody has a call, everybody has a job, everybody has gifts, and the whole body is enhanced when we use our gifts, right? Uh, hold on. Um, you got it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, and so... Uh, we are to stay connected. Uh, and so now, uh, one of the objectives on the 13th is to create connections. Okay? Create connections. And so one of the things that we do every Sunday morning is what? The vision. Our vision is the what? What does that look like? What does that really mean? I mean, I know we have it memorized, but what is that? Is that here or is that here? No, 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 no. Is it here or is it here? I hope. It is my fear, and, and, and this is not condemnation, but it is our fear it is my fear that because we come in and every Sunday morning we say it, it has shifted from here to here. Okay? So the objective in the next few Sundays is to walk through our vision so we know what it really looks like and we can walk it out. Okay? Our first opportunity, our first major opportunity is going to be on the 13th 
as a collective body uh, to walk out our vision. Vision is to embody the presence of Jesus Christ. That's all, as far as we're going today. To embody the presence of Jesus Christ. So Luke 10, 25. It says, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, Jesus, saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? What is your understanding of it? So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But he, the lawyer, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, I love it because Jesus always, Jesus, you, you know Jesus was an awesome preacher because he always got a story. So he breaks into a parable and he says, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a certain priest came down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, had compassion. Uh, so he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring in oil pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denaro, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was the neighbor to him who fell amongst thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Amen. Our, thought, our thought for today is embody the presence of Jesus Christ. Embody the presence of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you that you have been good to us in spite of all that we've done. And so, Father, we ask now that you would just continue to allow your spirit to lead and guide us. That you would keep your hand on us. God, that you would continue to keep us in these perilous times. I ask God that you would give me clarity of thought and clarity of speech that I might share your gospel effectively to the end that, my, that minds would be changed. So, Father, we thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Embodying the presence of Jesus Christ. And I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been digging at this and knocking at this and pulling at this and uh, was trying, trying to um, put a message together. Uh, that would help us to understand, help us to see um, what this embodying the presence of Jesus Christ looks like. Uh, and I struggled, and part of my struggle was uh, I was what I thought preoccupied with the affairs of this week. And somewhere in my mind, I thought I would be able to separate the week from the sermon. Uh, but what I began to realize was that this morning I would stand up and look in the faces of folk who have seen a video footage of young black males being killed this week. I would stand and look at the faces of a congregation who has seen footage of uh, a rogue shooter. He was not a sniper. He just had a gun. Uh, who... Allegedly, yeah, let me 
just keep moving. Allegedly shot 11 policemen and killed five. And of the 11, five died. Uh, somebody's saying, okay, Pastor, what, 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 you, what you talking about? If you forget history, we are doomed to repeat it. Do your own research and get your own answers. Don't take everything that the media puts out to you as the gospel. Okay? So, 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 so th this, this has been a hellish week. This has been a hellish week on Tuesday this week. Alton Sterling was shot and killed by police in Baton Rouge while selling CDs. Um, I don't know. I wasn't there. But from the footage that I saw, a gun was never visible until the man was dead. I, Wednesday, Philando Castile, school cafeteria manager, was killed. In the suburb of St. Paul, Minnesota, was pulled over. It depends on who you talk to. Some folks say he was well, pulled over because of a broken taillight. Others say they were pulled over because they fit the description of armed robbers from earlier in the week. It depends on who you talk to. But either way, he ends up dead. Thursday, during a Black Lives Matter peaceful protest, 25-year-old Micah Johnson from Mesquite, Mesquite, Texas, is accused of shooting 11 Dallas police officers. Five, Lauren Ahrens, Michael Smith, Michael Kroll, Patrick uh, Zamoripa, and Brent Thompson dying. I didn't come today to plead anybody's guilt or innocence. I came today, one, to talk about our vision, but also to help us open our eyes. Okay? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's Texas. Yes. Uh, it's Louisiana. Yes. Uh, it's Minnesota. But time keep on ticking. It's going to be down the road. That's it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, uh, when was it last week? There was a gentleman who was not of our community. A Caucasian gentleman, y'all missed it. Who fired on the police. And was arrested with no bullet holes in him. Since Thursday, there have been police shootings in Bristol, Tennessee, St. Louis, Missouri, Valdosta, Georgia, and San Antonio, Texas. We are in perilous times. While I understand the frustration, killing police is not the answer. While I understand what it is to be nervous when you see blue lights because you don't know who's in the car and what their objective is, killing police is not the answer. Get this, get this, get this. 2015, there were 102 unarmed black people killed in this nation by the police. Mm. Nearly one in three people killed by the police in 2015 were identified as unarmed. 37% of unarmed people killed by the police in the United States of America in 2015, uh, there were 37% were black. But we only make up 13% of the population. Unarmed black people are killed at a rate of five times that of unarmed white. 
I know I hear somebody saying the gospel isn't black or white. I understand that, and you're so correct. But we got to live in the culture that he created us in. And part of our issue is we are running around with blinders on like this stuff isn't happening. Uh, and, 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 and one of the most distressing things that I did see this week was somebody on Facebook who said prayer wasn't working. Mm -hmm. A Christian who said prayer wasn't working. Uh, I would beg to differ. Prayer works. But faith without works is dead. Dead, that's right. So while we are praying to God, while we're seeking God, we have to put in motion those instructions that he gives us. That's right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, get this, y'all. Out of the 102 cases, only, te only 10, uh, 10, only 10 of the 102 cases in 2015 where unarmed black persons were killed by the police resulted in any charges. Ten out of 102. But get this. Uh, and only one of the two officers convicted received jail time. Something wrong with this picture, y'all. Something's wrong with it. I mean, the, the, you do the math. You look at the statistics. Something ain't right. And it is, it's, it's a spiritual thing. And so we, my sisters and my brothers, we live in this world. And so we have to govern ourselves by spiritual laws. Uh, spiritual laws are higher than earthly laws. And so we have to take responsibility. Back in the 60s, if you talk to some of our elderly saints, it was the church community who led the charge. It was the church community who kept folk encouraged. It was the church that folk came to. But folk don't come to the church anymore because the same madness that's going on in the world is happening in the church. We live in a crazy world. And so my effort today is to help us deal with this and encourage us to embody the presence of Jesus Christ. Because that's the only thing that's going to fix these numbers. That's the only thing uh, uh, that's going to help you sleep at night when your son is out somewhere and you don't know where they are. That's the only thing that's going to help you sleep when your daughter is out and you don't know where they are is that you embody the presence of Jesus Christ. Now, to embody is to be an expression of or give tangible or a visible form to an idea, a quality, or a feeling. To personify, if you will. To symbolize, to epitomize, to give tangible form to. So... Now, if we are going to embody the presence of Jesus Christ, we understand uh, because uh, his body is not here, he has risen. Okay, that shouldn't be controversial this morning. He's risen. Uh, so what is here is what? His spirit. So if we're going to embody the presence of Jesus Christ, we have to have his spirit. Okay. Now, let's step into the text, and we're going to come back over here. We have to have a spirit. And so if you look at the text, we have this brother who has decided that he is going uh, from Jerusalem to Jericho. And, and on this road, he is attacked. Uh, he is attacked and uh, left for dead, and some folk come by, and, and they don't help him. And then somebody comes by and helps him, takes him to the inn, and basically goes in, stays the night, and says, look. Here's the money. Take care of him. Get him back on his feet. And when I come back through, anything else that I owe you, I'll pay you. So then the question becomes, uh, who's really this man's neighbor? Was it people out of his culture? Was it people out of his community? Or was it the person who showed up and was a blessing in his life when he needed help the most? First thing we want to look at as the trip. 10, uh, 1030 says a certain man was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. And this trip, this trip is about 17 miles. 
uh, down this road that was known to harbor criminals and robbers. Uh, and, and history teaches us that, that, that these criminals and robbers would hide in caves. And, and as travelers came down, they would rush out and, and grab them and beat them and steal whatever it was they wanted. And so we see he's making a trip. Now, there are those, there are those who would over-spiritualize this text and say that nothing good happens when you go down. Right? Uh, what does it say? He went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Well, that, that doesn't really have anything to do with spiritually. I mean, if Jerusalem is located higher than Jericho, then how are you going to get there other than you go? Go down. Okay. All right. Y'all with me so far. All right. So he is determined to make this trip. Doesn't say who he is. Doesn't say why he's making the trip. Doesn't say why he's going, what his purpose is, who he's looking for, what he's going to do. None of that. It's a certain man. And so what I've come to realize is we all can be a certain man or a certain woman. In these uncertain times, we can all be that certain man or that certain woman. Can I put it in 2016? We can all wake up. We can all wake up and find that one of our loved ones or we can even be a hashtag come tomorrow. time in our lives we we didn't worry about that we we just went where we went there was a time we did there was a time when there was a time i remember and i'm only 53 that you we people of our community you weren't caught in west hillsboro below that light that was up above flint fabrics you wouldn't uh, after dark you didn't go past that light some of the some of the saints in here not they know what i'm talking about See, these young folk think it's been free all the time. They, they don't understand. Uh, and, and so uh, he decides to make the trip. But not only is there a trip, but here comes trouble. 1030B says, our traveler is attacked by robbers. His money is taken. He's beaten and he's left for dead. Uh, there are times in our lives when life will beat you down. Folk in life will beat you down. Take all they can from you and leave you for dead. Call you dead. Walk away from you and give you no help. But what I need you to understand is now is our season to stand because God's people never shine so bright as, it, as they do it when it is dark. So now is not the time to cower back in caves. Now is the time to stand up and lean on and depend on the God that we sing about, the God that we preach about, the God we declare to our children, the God we declare over our grandchildren. It's time that we stand up and be the church. Well, what you talking about, Pastor? We need to be out providing. No, I ain't saying you need to be out nowhere protesting. That's not what I'm saying. That's not everybody's ministry. But whatever it is God has placed in you, now's the time to start operating in it. Now's the time to start doing what it is he has called you to do. We have the trip. We have the trouble. But then we have the test. Here it is. Here comes the priest. Surely the priest is going to help him. I, I sat in the back, but I was at church last week. Surely the preacher going to help me. But not only does he not help, but he passes by on the other side. side. Hmm. Well, now here comes the Levite. I'm amazed that the, the priest didn't help, but surely the Levite will do something. And, and the Levite passes on the other side side. What is your point, Pastor? What I'm trying to get you to see is sometimes the people that you think are really your neighbors are not your neighbors. So you have to have a standing definition of what a neighbor is. See, when I was growing up, a neighbor was somebody that lived not in the next house. If you lived as far as we could see, you were our neighbor because you were fair game when we needed some flour, some sugar, uh, 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 if, if a child needed a whooping and hadn't got home yet? Okay, how many of y'all got whooped at the neighbor's house and got sent home? See, see. But our neighborhood is shrinking. Our neighborhood is shrinking. How many? I don't raise your hand. Many of us don't even know the person that lives two houses over. I don't. I don't. 
It's a shame. I don't. I got children, grandchildren move around the neighborhood, and I don't even know who is two houses from me. But the sad state is I ain't the only one. But here comes this Samaritan, this half-breed. The joker, he only comes to church on Mother's Day, homecoming, and maybe Christmas. <laughs> no, he ain't say he ain't gonna do nothing. Yeah, if it, y'all know the murmuring, the murmuring when we really not say anything, but we uh, 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 that that yeah. But this brother looks and sees that there is a need. He goes over, and he uses his wine to disinfect the wounds. Then he uses his oil to soothe his wounds, bandages them up, puts them on his horse, which now means he got to walk. Takes him to the inn, gets a room. Next day says, look, take care of him. Get him on his feet. And when I come back, if I owe you more, I'll pay you. Now, when I began to investigate, this amount that he paid this man would cover 24 days. 24 days. So now, if you want to bring it up, 2016. So he finds him by the interstate, takes him to the hotel, and pays approximately $2,800 and says, when I come back through here, if I owe you more, I'll pay you. He embodies the presence of Jesus Christ. He does not judge. He sees a need, and he addresses the need. Not only does he address the need, but he addresses the need at his own personal cost. How many times have we walked away from ministry opportunities because it was going to cost us more than we really wanted to pay? Raise your hand. Just look straight ahead. Nobody (laughs) will know it's me and you. He understands that this is his opportunity, even as a Samaritan, even as a half-breed, even even being on the, the low end of the totem pole in society, that this man has a need that I can address. So one thing he does not do, he does not look at his the things that he has to fight against, but what he looks at is a man who needs help. And he determines if he needs help and I can provide it, I'm going to provide. If we're going to embody the presence of Jesus Christ, we've got to look past barriers. We've got to look past skin color. We've got to look past what community you live in, what family you came out of. We've got to look past all of that and see needs as Christ sees needs. Now, you've got to use wisdom. Now, if the brother is a known addict, you don't give him money. He's hungry, you buy him something to eat. That's right. But the easy way is to give him five dollars. The responsible way is to get him what he needs. Right. Okay, let me let me help you. Let me make this live. Don't raise your hand because they may be in here. How many of us have gotten Christmas presents that we did not want, did not like, and did not need? Because nobody came to you and says, what is it that you need? What is it that you desire so I can bless you like you want to be blessed? But what we do is we bless folk like we want to bless them. So he determines he's going to do for this man what this man cannot do for himself. Uh, It costs him. As a matter of fact, he sacrifices one night staying there. But it cost him financially, but he was determined to do for this man what needed to be done. Here's, 
here, here it is in a nutshell. We're going to embody the presence of Jesus Christ. We have to be willing to go into people's lives, meet them where they are. They may be on the road half dead. They may be on the road drunk. They may be on the road homeless. They may be on the road sick. I don't know where on the road we're going to find them, but wherever we find them, we have to be willing to go where they are. And when we go where they are, we have to take our oil and our wine so we can help bind up their wounds. We don't need to show up at the church and begin to beat folk up and drag folks through the mud. They already know they messing up. They already know they need help. They already know they got problems, but we got to show up and be the church and love them right where they are. All of us are here because somebody loved us where we were. Somebody found us, came to us, because, you know, we paint this pristine picture that the Lord came to us between candelabras on the altar with seraphims humming in the air and light sparkling. No. Most of us got run into church because life out there was killing us. Many of us were at our last option. Tried everything else and wasn't there nothing else working and just decided I'd give the church a try. We were met where we are. And I understand there are some standards. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. There are standards. I believe in holiness. I believe we ought to act like we're supposed to act. I believe we ought to be in the word. I think we ought to. Uh, there's some things. Okay, let me go here. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling this one. There are some things that may not necessarily be sin. But as a child of the king, you don't need to do them. There are certain things that may not be sin, but as his people, as his children, we don't need to participate. Because what it does, it wrecks your witness to the power of the God that you serve. Uh -huh. That's all right. Y'all quiet, but I know I'm right. Uh, uh, we have to meet people where they are, understand uh, the issues that help place them there. Because sometimes you're going to run into folk who put themselves there. Sometimes you're going to run into folk who their relatives put them there. Or you're going to run into folk, society put them there. But we can't go picking and choosing well, I help you because you didn't do that, and I help you because you don't do that, and I, I ain't never done that, so I help you. Out. No, no, no. Sin is sin. While your sin may not be my sin, and my sin may not be her sin, sin is still sin. So we can't base who we help on sin. If you look at... The, the parable, it was the man that was least expected to embody the presence of Jesus Christ that showed up and did the Christ-like thing. Don't discount folk because they don't look like you. Don't discount folk because they can't quote King James Version. Don't discount folk because they come in, in in jeans and T-shirts. Don't discount folk. Because you never know who God is going to use to be a blessing in your life. So, back into where we are as a nation. If we're going to turn this thing around, we the church have to embody the presence of Jesus Christ. I ain't say we got to embody coming to church every Sunday morning. We have to embody the presence of Jesus Christ. What happened when Christ showed up in any situation? It never remained the same. If his presence is in us, we ought to be able to walk on the grounds of Crump Village on the 13th, and somebody's life be changed. May not be everybody, and if it's only one, 
It's all worth it. All right. That's right. Embody, the, be his hands and his feet in the earth. Be his hands and feet in the earth. And in being his hands and his feet in the earth, understand that we are under spiritual attack. But also understand uh, that, senior saints, y'all forgive me, but these younger saints will know what I'm talking about. We ain't no punks. We ain't weak knee, mealy mouth, no spine having Christians, but we have authority. God has given us authority to stand. God has given us authority to speak things that are not as though they were and they'll come to pass. But we can't sit down in a corner in the dark doing nothing, saying nothing. Everything going to be all right. No, what did he call you to do? Stand up and say something. Who's praying for the police force? That's a real question. Because I'm telling you where I am. I had to put myself in check. I have friends who are police officers. I know a good police, great guys. But without even knowing it, I was putting everybody in one bag. So what we need to be doing, embodying the presence of Jesus Christ, is lifting up all police officers. Not just the good ones, but the ones out there tripping. We need to pray, be praying that the Holy Spirit will arrest them. We need to be praying for these families who have suffered loss. We need to be praying for uh, 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 all of these uh, black males and females who are dying at the hands of those who are sworn to protect and serve, y'all. We got to take a good glimpse of what's going on in society, and we got to take it to prayer. If your instructions is to protest, then you protest. Your instructions to preach, then you preach. Teach whatever it is that he gives you to help our community out of where we are, that is what you do. There is no blanket cover all. We all got to do the same thing. No. It goes back to that connection. We each serve an integral part of the body. And when you bring your part, she brings her part, he brings his part, she brings her part. We all come together. We got something going on. But if you've ever witnessed a basketball team that has had so many players foul out that they got to finish the game with four players, they run around like chickens with their head cut off because it's four people trying to cover five. And if you got five half decent ball players, it's impossible. When you don't come to the table with your part, you leave us shorthanded and we got to scramble to make it happen. Embody the presence of Jesus Christ. In other words, what would Jesus do? Don't need the bracelet, don't need the chain, don't get the Bible cover. Get a Nike spirit. Just do it. That's what he's called us to do, y'all. Embodying the presence of Jesus Christ says, I step into any situation as a representative of the king. I'm, I am an ambassador, and my actions are such that the king is there himself. Y'all missed that. My actions are as if the king is there himself because I'm moving on his assignment. So when I talk, I'm saying what he told me to say. When I go, I'm going where he told me to go. I'm operating on his behalf. I ain't showing up doing this on my own. I ain't trying to get on the cameras. I ain't trying to get seen. I ain't trying to create a name for myself. But I'm showing up doing what he has instructed me to do. And as long as we do that, 
we all right. Yeah, the church may never, the church ne may never have to put out chairs in the aisle for 1045 service. That is not the measure of a church. When you fulfill the mission, the vision that God has given us, that's the measure of a church. So whether it's 50 or 5,000, we need to be about his business. And when we embody his presence, although we take messed up trips, fall into trouble, and we see tests, he will guide us through this. So don't, 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 they, listen, there are, two, there are two, two spirits that work in the land, and we're going to go. One is anger. Everybody's angry. Everybody's mad. Just mad. Mad because they're mad. But the second one that is even more dangerous is fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. You don't have to drive down the road afraid. Do what you're supposed to do if you get stopped, but you ain't got to drive scared. See, this is too practical for some of y'all. Y'all want the pie in the sky squeal? That ain't the day. We got to help folk live. I don't intend on accepting nobody's call talking about I need to come to their house because their son has been shot, their daughter has been shot. That night, uh, uh no. Devil is a lie. Because we're going to stand on the word of God. We're going to talk to our children. We're going to talk to our youth. We're going to encourage each other, and ain't nobody scared. Not scared. Chapel Baptist Church, located at 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina, where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain, preaching a powerful message that will definitely bless your heart and soul. The church vision is impacting, transforming, and empowering people's lives for victorious living. Yes, this church designed for you and mine, where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain, preaching a powerful message every Sunday morning. Yes, the church location is 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina. The telephone number for prayer, information, or directions is 578-1450. Make sure you come out to this awesome church where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain of Miles Chapel Baptist Church, located again at 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina. Now, thank you so much for watching, and may God continue to richly bless you.